Cole Custer set to make a big announcement. Rockingham could be on its way back on the schedule, and Trackhouse has a new investor. Let's get into it. Coming up next. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing good today. All right, Cole Custer is set to make an announcement Saturday. Let's take a look at this tweet from Bob Pockris. Cole Custer will announce his 2025 plans Saturday morning in Indianapolis. The media alert has a Haas logo on it. He is the favorite to land the cup ride with the Haas factory team. Gene Haas is keeping one of the four SHR charters. So although this has been rumored for quite some time and he will, I guess, make it official on Saturday, it is interesting because it does open up a few questions, the first of which being what number will they run? Traditionally, Haas has had a zero. They've run the double zero in the Xfinity series. They've The Haas tooling has been on the 41 car in the Cup series. Cole Custer formerly drove the 41 car in the Cup series. So do they go with the zero? Do they go with the double zero? Do they go with the 41? That is one question that probably and hopefully it will be answered. Is there another sponsor that's going to be on board? Will we have Andy's Frozen Custard? We know Haas Tooling and Haas Automation will be on that ride for sure. But will he bring other you know, sponsors with him? That's going to be interesting. Do they announce that at this particular press conference as well? And finally, the, the more important question to me, who is going to be the, the crew chief? How many former Stuart Haas members are they keeping on there? What is, going that, what is that team going to look like going forward? Because as you've seen here recently, the crew chiefs, with the drivers, with this new car, this new spec car, basically, the crew chief and the driver uh, relationship is more important than it's ever been. So if you have a good crew chief to pair with Cole Custer, who we have seen do really good things in the Xfinity Series, winning the championship last year, just won the race the other day in the Xfinity Series. If the pairing works out, if they have good chemistry, a good relationship, you could see Cole Custer reach his potential in the Cup Series. Obviously, he won the race at Kentucky his rookie season, won the Rookie of the Year, but we never saw him really rise to the level that he was in the Xfinity Series. So if he gets a good crew chief pairing, there is a good chance that he will elevate to his full potential in the Cup Series. So it'll just be an interesting situation to watch. If the team will be good at all, we've seen Haas run by himself before in the Cup Series. He wasn't necessarily great. So everything everything about this situation is going to be interesting going forward, but they will apparently make it official on Saturday. Lovenheim teases very good times ahead for Rockingham Speedway at Open House from William R. Toller at the Richmond Observer. Soon, that was Dan Lovenheim's answer to the question of when high-level racing will be returning to the iconic Rockingham Speedway. We are di diligently underway in doing that in a number of areas, Lovenheim told the crowd, during the track's third annual open house on July 13th. While there is no official announcement, the Speedway's majority owner said, We hope to have very good and positive news for you soon. Please be patient with us. We see very good times ahead. So obviously he is hinting that they're having some type of arrangement with NASCAR because that 100% is what everybody's thinking, so I'm pretty much assuming that's what he's meaning. Now, whether that be a truck series race or an Xfinity series race or a cup series race, that is up for debate. Like, you've heard all kinds of stuff out there. There's been all kinds of rumors about Rockingham for several years now, close to a decade, to be quite honest, about the cup series coming back to Rockingham or the trucks or Xfinity or whatever. But the timing of him basically saying all this is very interesting. Because with NBC's Olympic break and the break in the NASCAR Cup Series coverage for the next two weeks, it is expected that NASCAR is going to release the schedule for the 2025 season. And when they do that, it would line up with him saying news is coming very soon. So if he's basically saying that the Cup Series schedule is going to be announced and they said you're going to get really positive news here very soon, it's kind of easy to put those two things together and say, hey, Rockingham is going to be on the Cup schedule. Now, I'm not saying it is or isn't, but there are a lot of people out there speculating that that's what he meant when he said good news is coming your way soon. So please be patient because uh, all these things lining up is going to be very interesting. Rockingham was opened in 1965, and 2004 was the last race there for the Cup Series in which Matt Kenseth won. Carl Edwards had that crazy flip. The fastest lap ever turned there was by Rusty Wallace at 23 seconds or something like that. Hold on. 23.167 seconds for Rusty Wallace in 2000. 
And Richard Petty has the most wins there at 11. I think Kale Yarbrough is second with seven or eight or something like that. So been around for a long time, 1965, 2004, last race there. It's changed ownership a few times. Andy Hillenberg owned it at one point, and I don't know exactly who owns it now, but it has been refurbished and built up. They got some of that North Carolina money uh, when, all the, when all the tracks and stuff got their money for that. So it should be in good shape, and it's one of those tracks that people have been uh, wanting to be back on the schedule for a long time. Now, they wanted the All-Star Race. They didn't get the All-Star Race. Obviously, that's going back to North Wilkesboro uh, next year for sure. But them getting even a Truck Series race or an Xfinity Series race, I think, would be huge. A cup race, a cup points paying race before North Wilkesboro gets a cup series points paying race would also be interesting. So it'll just be really interesting what the news comes out that they have to offer whenever it comes out, whether it be when NASCAR releases the schedule or when they release some news themselves. Via Caitlin Vinci on Twitter, thank you, Loyal Closers. The Happy Harvick podcast has landed on television. Our current episode live now on FS1. I've loved working alongside Kevin Harvick, Mama Smith on this unique show and proud of our team at Fox. So there you go. No longer just the podcast, no longer just on YouTube. The Happy Hour with Kevin Harvick and Caitlin Vinci and Mamba Smith will be available on FS1. So I guess that's going to take the place of Race Hub. So there you go. They are on network TV now. So good for all of them. This via Jayski Avenue Sports Fund today announced it has acquired a significant minority stake in Trackhouse Entertainment Group, the parent company to Trackhouse Racing, which fields teams in the NASCAR Cup Series and the most popular racing series in North America, the FIM Moto World GP Championship and Premier Motorcycle Racing Series in the world. The parties declined to disclose the investment, only saying it's sizable. We had quite a bit of opportunities to do work with other groups, but Justin has the only was was the only one who understood the business and also saw which way it was going to go. Lassery Avenue's chief executive officer and co-founder said in an interview, the money from Avenue will be invested in several areas, including technology to boost performance on the track and fan engagement, Marks said. So there you go. Trackhouse remains one of the most interesting teams on the track and off of it. They've always got something going on. And it's going to be really, really interesting to see what they do with fan engagement from here on out because I feel like they kind of lead the series in that in some aspects uh, already. So the fact that it's going to get even bigger, that's going to be, be great. And also injecting more money into them to see them get better and get faster. It'll also be interesting because they have by far been the second best Chevrolet team this year behind Rick Hendrick, Hendrick Motorsports, if they can close that gap even a little bit, that would be something uh, something to watch for sure because Hendrick has been uh, absolutely uh, doing great this year. So if they can get closer to Hendrick as the secondary Chevrolet team, that'll be interesting. But yeah, big things happening over there at Trackhouse. Those aren't the only business shakeups in NASCAR, though. NASCAR itself has uh, shaken up and restructured sort of its management deal. These are just the highlights. I'm not going to get into the nuts and bolts. Uh, first, I want to say they did lay off a few people, so some people did get laid off. But the big moves that everybody's talking about is Ben Kennedy France will now answer to Steve o O'Donnell. He is the chief uh, executive president or something like that of something now, and now he only answers to Steve O'Donnell, so there's only one person in between him uh, and Jim France. So he has moved himself up the ladder. And Steve Phil in the same position said he now is going to be able to change his focus because they've moved Ben Kennedy France up into this position to uh, focus on making NASCAR a big a bigger global brand so look for NASCAR to uh, focus on being more global in the future which is interesting with the schedule coming out during the Olympic break uh, are they going to announce that uh, NASCAR is going to be racing uh Outside of the United States, I guess, would be the best way to put that. So that's going to lead to some more speculation about that. And, and it appears to be Ben Kennedy France's main objective is going to be to uh, make the sport more modern, I guess, and stuff like that. So we'll have to see how all that shakes out. A lot of speculation. I'm just going to wait and see how things unfold. But a lot of people are speculating one way or the other. But those were the two big moves that everybody was talking about from the organizational management, management uh, shakeup or whatever. This via Jayski True Value sponsors return of IROC. True Value is proud to once again partner with the IROC International Race of Champions to celebrate the best of the best. So even though that picture right there has Crown Royal on the hood, if you remember back in the day, True Value was always on the side of the car. So True Value uh, sponsoring them again, that's going to be really cool. A throwback to just when the cars were with one bright color and uh, True Value was on the side in either black or white. So that's going to be a cool throwback. And hopefully they can keep that relationship going forward and keep that classic retro look uh, with how the series develops from here on out. Kyle Larson running the Coca-Cola 600 scheme at Indianapolis. It will surely be a historic weekend in Indiana when Hendrick Motorsports and NASCAR Cup Series take to Indianapolis. 
So there you go. Kyle Larson will finally drive the 600 or 1,100 mile uh, car uh, that he didn't get a chance to get in due to weather uh, during the uh, double. So he will be racing at Indian Indianapolis. This had been a rumor out there for a while. And on the same note, uh, Rick Hendrick will be driving the pace car at Indianapolis as well. And on a final bit of sponsor news, Brickyard 400 with RCR for Ty Dillon. He'll drive the number 33 car for Richard Childress Racing. Joining Jimmy Johnson, uh, BJ McLeod, AJ Allmendinger, and Cody Ware as sort of guys who aren't full-time, but will also be in that race. All right, that's all I got for you on this one. If you made it this far, we'd love to have your subscri subscription. If not, I'll keep making these things. If you're already subscribed, you know I appreciate you all as well. If you got a question, comment, or anything like that, leave it down in the comments section. Uh, if you want to help out the channel, visit the merch store. The link is in the description. And other than that, thanks for your time. Peace. <laughs>